brief about myself. Um, I'm Albert um, from MMU. Okay, um, I've been doing actually virtual reality. It's not my first area. My first area is basically gaming technology. Anything related to game technology, uh, I'm, I'm, I really like it. Um, but then, because of this gaming technology, right, it actually spun off a lot of technology that supports it. For example, VR, AR, MR. Apa tu RR thing? Yeah. Not, not R rated. Huh? <laughs> okay, um, so I'm here to basically share a bit on this virtual reality. What, what is this virtual reality? Um, what is going on out there? Uh, is it a buzzword? Is it a trend? Or is it, it will be like you know a cycle where it starts, you know, um, last few years, then it's going to fade in the next few years. Okay, so I try to I'll try my best to answer and also uh, to ex to to explain to share what I know about this technology. Okay, in the perspective of game and also business application. If you have anything interest uh, question later, we have a Q and A. You can actually ask me about it. Okay, and also I brought my um, research assistant with me, Gan and also Lee at the back. Okay, um, later on after this, you know. The most important thing is after a talk, right? We need to have something to show, or else after the talk, then go by, then nothing nice. So I brought myself um, a VR stuff. That later I'll let you guys to test about it. Okay, and before that, I will talk a bit, a bit on the tech behind this VR solution. Okay, so um, again, I'm, I'm very happy, glad to be here. Okay, to to actually share my topic of the day. So. Um, yeah, the topic virtual reality and its application. As an academic academic shun, right? The first thing is always definition. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, okay, I love to be informal, but well, as an academic, it has to you have to define its technology first. Rather than you know, we straight jump to you know virtual virtual reality can do A, do B, do C, do Z. At the end of the day, somebody will ask me a question, uh, what is virtual reality? So it's to prevent that, it's better for me to define first. Okay, you can actually get this definition on the internet and just Google it out. So um, blah, 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 blah. Basically, virtual reality is a technology that uh, creates a virtual reality. Okay? <laughs> Reality is something that's real, right? Virtual is something that's not real, right? When you put real and not real together, you get a blunder. Oh. Yeah, you, you know, it's, it's like, huh? On one hand, it's reality. On the other hand, it's virtual. So what are you referring to? Okay? But basically, virtual reality is a set of technology that enable this uh, creation of digital world, a virtual world, in which it is it looks so real that you feel that it's reality. So in order to do that, we will have we will need a lot of technology uh, on software and also the hardware. And all this software and hardware, to, it has its own purpose, that sole purpose, to simulate what is real. Okay, all this hardware there, they will try to you know do ha having high end processing power to create simulation. You know all these powerful hardware GPU machines to render something that's real, close to real. In which you know nowadays, if you are a gamer, sorry, I'm from the gaming aspect. If you look at all the games nowadays, it, it feels like a Hollywood multi-million, you know, budget special effects that looks so real. And people come to you and say, "Oh, it's just a game. It's all rendered out in our GPU and it's real time." And you'll be like, "Wow." Okay, I never know that real-time graphic can be something that's as real as like that. Okay, so that is in terms of the visual, the processing power, the hardware. And then there's a certain part of the hardware is to do sensory simulation. Like what, you know, you know like, like the recent one, um, I don't know whether, have you heard of it? It's an it, it's a, uh, add-on input device for virtual reality when you put on your nose. It actually creates a sense of smell. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of it? No, okay, let me share with this. It's a very weird gadget built for a game. Okay, for this game called South Park. Anyone heard of South Park? South Park. South Park. The game. My goodness. 
Okay, um, yeah, that, that one is it's M rated, uh, huh? South Park itself is a cute cartoon which is M rated. Okay, the game itself, it's what you know, it, you, you need that device that put onto your nose where it simulates F A R T. <laughs> My goodness, I mean, why, where in the world people want to create something like that? Okay, for your information, gamer huh, is a bunch of guinea pig. They love to test on something that's new. It works on gamer, maybe it works on the majority consumer. If the gamer cannot take it, sorry, it's a definitely no-no to consumer. So this device was introduced on top of that game, South Park the game, okay, where it's a virtual reality, uh, you put it onto your nose, and when this special character that does the F A R T, you get to smell it. <laughs> My goodness! And yeah, that's one part of the very important crucial thing on virtual reality. So imagine if you see something that's real and you get to smell that guy. Oh my gosh! Okay, so that's sensory, one part of the hardware to simulate the smell. What about the haptic hand? You know, hand um, um, sensors and whatnot. Okay, this is very common in virtual reality. Okay, so people foresee that in the future, okay, you wear this thing, the headset, together with a treadmill that simulate local motion, another word for movement. Okay, then you have that smell placed onto your nose. You hold a gun. It's like with this. Hardware and software that are working together with that, of course, running with uh, running a powerful uh, PC at the background. With all these hardware and software working together, it will basically teleport you guys to a virtual world. And in the future, you'll be like, "Whoa, man! I'm doing sports in uh, what eight times eight square feet of space." <laughs> Seriously, see seriously, and this is really coming. This is really coming. Okay, so you know the definition of um, you, you, have, you have a clear view of virtual reality. You know the definition of virtual reality. So let's take a look on the timeline of virtual reality. Long, long time ago, in a galaxy not so far away. Okay, um, the, the the initial concept of this virtual reality started at, at during nineteen fifties. Okay, where this guy introduces this device called Sensorama. So this is that device that trying to mimic the idea of virtual reality. In fact, that was the concept where you know you use machine to create something, some world that it's not here and yet it looks like you are in that world. Okay, that virtual world. Fast forward to 1977. Okay. Um, Brooks Group project, okay, it, it was a research project where having 3D vision that is uh, displayed on a big TV screen, right now everybody say, ah, that's so common, my house TV is bigger than that. But during that day, at that time, right, 1977, if you see something like this, you'll be like, wow, this is Star Trek, man. Okay, so researcher have actually done a hand, you know, this this arm, this mechanical arm here, okay, to mimic the hand gestures, you know, to, to feel, to touch, to control what is uh, displayed in the virtual space. Okay, then move, moving on to 1989, okay, NASA view system was introduced. Wow, that was the boom of virtual reality at that time. So, you know, NASA uses the view system to create that, you know, a virtual world that it trains astronaut. Okay, together with the headset, you know, the haptic device, earphone to create that, you know, um, 360 feeling of virtual reality. What's next? Then it went deep. Simply because processing power is not there yet. Okay, um, I think virtual reality eventually died during 1990s, late 1990s. Few reasons behind that. Number one, hardware too expensive. Number two, computing power is not there yet. 
we don't have this groundbreaking, you know, GPU that's so powerful, powerful people go and mine Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. In, by right, it should be used it for computer graphics, right? And people goes, goes and use it to mine Bitcoin. Okay? And everything is so expensive and the application itself is very limited simply because um, application itself, it's very heavy. That requires a lot of processing power processing resources okay so why maturity now I thought it's already dead until 2013 one guy okay came up to this Kickstarter program it's a it's a crowdsourcing program that has the idea of consumer level head mount devices this uh, display whereby it's like that this is the whole prototype and he's, he, according to this guy, uh, John, he was saying that this is going to revolutionize virtual reality whereby last time... <laughs> okay, I know, I know why John, John, yeah, we have a John. Yeah, hi John. <laughs> okay, um, and what happened was, he thinks that with this new design, Okay, it's going to make the HMD previously uh, 10,000 USD for one HMD to reduce down to less than 1,000 USD and it becomes affordable. When devices becomes affordable, GPU technology and also the uh, rendering technology that we have, we have achieved a level where we can render close to real graphics, this is the time. So I think Oculus, that time the company was formed, Oculus made it at the right timing. The Kickstarter was fully successful, fully funded, and they managed to get a lot of support from Samsung. That's why Oculus is, you know, they have a version called Oculus Samsung VR, Gear VR. Okay, fast forward, 2013, the game changer, now. We have all these top competitors. Oculus Rift, they released out the new consumer version. HTC Vive, my personal favorite. PlayStation VR, that sells more than a million over the world. That comes together with um, PlayStation. And without, if you look at it closely, right guys, again, the current application of all these HMD are in games. Steam game, Steam Xbox game, PlayStation. Okay. If you look at the cycle, right? Gamers are guinea pig. If gamers say, okay, nice, trust me, in the next few years, you'll be consumer based. This is exactly what happens as Kinect. I know Kinect is already dead. But when Kinect was out, people say, oh, I see, I can use my hand gesture to do gestures and whatnot. The consumer, sorry, the gamer becomes the guinea pig, and it was approved by the gamer. Samsung took it and put it on their smart TV. And right now, smart TV you can use hand to control. Agree? Yes. Seen that? Yeah. So, okay. So I'm, I'm foreseeing that this cycle is going to come again. Okay. So that would would be the virtual reality timeline. Okay. So. Yeah, right now I know virtual reality, I know the timeline, I know what's happening now, I'm pretty excited. So, I want to know what are the types of virtual reality, you know, you are there. Um, just now I did mention we have this Samsung, Samsung type of Galax, um, virtual reality, we have Oculus, Oculus Rift type of virtual reality. Are they the same, are they not the same? The price, okay, the pros and cons. So, what's the difference? Okay, number one. Samsung Gear VR, or you the one that, that is more commonly known as, you know, you have this casing, Samsung Gear casing, then you, you slot it in a S7, S, S8, then you put it on your head, wow, you know, it's virtual reality. And a much sophisticated one where you have all these big setup, you know, with a lot of cables surrounding you, then you have this big controller, okay? If, if let's say, uh, two of this technology are the same. Then it doesn't do justice to those you know with cable. They must be certain different. Okay, currently what's the difference? The mobile type 
category one, the mobile type, the quality will not be as good as the one that I mentioned with cable and whatnot, with all this expensive setup. So what, what, what it means by expensive setup? You, when you have all this sensor set up in the space, it can basically sense you, you have a more precise sensing and movement as compared to those that don't have a sensor. Okay, but well, not everybody can afford a 3,500 ringgit HMD. So, you know, if your budget is like, oh, my budget is like 500, now uh, you got a 500 version. Uh. The 500 ringgit version would be the mobile type. Okay, so first of all, mobile type, it's like the main thing about mobile type is mobile, your phone. So basically, right now, any other phone, you know, the latest smartphone, you can do VR already. Okay, and this category is what we call the mobile type VR. So what is the definition? What is the characteristic of this mobile type VR? All processing power all done on your phone. Every single thing on your phone. That's why you don't need extra uh, PC workstation. Whereas the data type, all processing is done on a workstation. The, the station that your the, the workstation that the HMD is connected with, that's why you need cable. Okay? So in summary, cheap, expensive. <laughs> Simple, complex. Okay? So yeah. Not so quality, quality. Depending which one you want. But um, there's this, is there something in between? If I don't want to be very expensive, I don't want it to be super cheap, I want it to have somewhere in between. Do you have it currently? No, but later we will be demonstrating our solution, we, in which we call it hybrid. Well, I coin my own idea, hybrid. It's like, you know, hybrid using gasoline and electric. Okay, anyway, anyway, yeah, so this hybrid is basically, it uses the client-server architecture of a theatre and yet the advantageous part is you no need to have the cable and you are freely to move around. Processing power or you can pass wireless, wirelessly to your uh, PC or workstation. Okay, so as a comparison table, okay, it's very, I, I try to find this out to let you guys know what are the classification. I know it's a bit small. Okay, I, I can read it out. The most original type of VR is your Google Cardboard. Have you heard of this Google Cardboard? It's just a cardboard and Google sell it for 35 ringgit. Mm, okay, it's just a piece of cardboard and two lens. Um, then you have this, all this casing. The one that is category on mobile is all casing only. Okay, so Homito, Zest VR1, Gear VR. Even LG 360 VR, all these are what we call casing. You buy the casing, you get your phone, you slot into it, then you have a VR. Okay? But if you have the money, eh, like 399 USD, 599 USD, and also 799 USD, eh, you can opt for PlayStation VR, Oculus Rift, and also HTC Vive. Then you need a um, workstation, a console to do processing. But of course, with this price that you paid, you get a very high quality VR over here. Okay, so currently there's this, this two category. Hopefully my hybrid uh, will somehow squeeze somewhere in between. Okay, so a detailed tech talk a bit on the specs, just in case for those geeks that love, yeah, I want to know more about the tech. For those that are not, I'm so sorry. Okay, so the normal display for this theater type, the one that uses cable, okay, they use OLED. Very good quality display, OLED. Resolution can go up to 2K, you know. 20 um, is a full HD, more than a full HD, 2160 times 1200. The refresh rate is around 90 hertz. So that's super fast. Okay? and so on and so forth. So these are the two comparisons between Oculus Reef, 399, 599. Sorry, 599, 799. Okay, but just in case anyone would have wanted to go for this, I would recommend HTC Vive. Because HTC Vive, although it's slightly expensive, more expensive, 
but you have sensors that you can track your movement, precise movement. They call it room space. Room space is a feature where if you stand here, you can actually squat down and your VR, the one that you are looking at, you can squat down. You can see what's under the table. You can do that uh, precise sensing on the room space. Whereas, too bad, um, HD uh, Oculus Rift, no, they don't have that yet. Okay, they have it, but it's not that precise. Then, we come back to the mobile category. Okay, mobile category, this is only um, casing. Okay, you are, you are spending 500 ringgit for casing, huh? Please bear in mind, 500 ringgit for casing. Okay, um, but for the casing part, you, have, you still got spec, you know, you still got spec, or else they cannot sell, you know, you need this spec thing to sell. Okay, the most important thing of the casing is always the field of view. If you look at here, these two, optical lens, for the 2016 Gear VR, the field of view is 96. Okay, what is field of view? The way that you look. Okay, the wider, it looks more natural. The smaller, it is more, it's narrower. Okay, so um, 2016, 96. 2017 Gear VR. So for those that wanted to get a Gear VR, you have almost over 100 degree. So that's a lot of improvement. This is 129 USD. Five ringgit, huh? plus minus. Or you can get a 10 ringgit type which is this one. I, I'm not here to promote the casing. Eh? Please bear in mind. I'm just telling you that there are, are cheaper alternatives out there. Okay? So, this casing is 10 ringgit. Okay? But too bad the field of view is only 70. But still okay lah, 10 ringgit compared to 500 ringgit. Yeah, I think that's like a lot of discount there, right? Well, I, 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 I can... I can I can live with it, okay? I can live with it. The rest of it, the rest of the technical spec over here, it depends on your phone. If your phone is the super fast, super high end, congratulations, you have you have all the tech specs that you need to do a mobile VR. Okay, so that's what happened. I mean, that's what are the categories that we have. So what's next? Okay, what is next? This is next. Um, I believe that HTC and also Oculus Rift, they wanted to penetrate into more of their market. They don't want to rely much on the high quality VR based on the theater cable type of virtual reality. They want to have something like the mobile without the mobile phone. That's where they introduce this two product. For Oculus, they came up with this Oculus Go. For HTC Vive, they came up with this HTC Vive Focus. This is for China market. Okay, what's the difference? No cable, built-in phone lens processor inside here. So meaning that if you buy this, if I'm mistaken, the price for this is 299 USD, if I'm mistaken. You buy this, you no need to get yourself a phone, everything is inside. So you have a in built-in phone inside here to process the visual. Same goes for your HTC Vive Focus. Is that clear? Okay. What about the application? Uh -huh. So, okay, all the boring stuff done. All the boring stuff done. Huh? Okay, let's talk about the application. So, I know, I, I know that I have this VR category. You know, um, the type of mobile and the theater type of category, the specs. Okay, what is really happening? Got people use VR. You talk a lot, but where's the application? I give you example number one. <laughs> Okay, this is basically a clear screenshot from YouTube. Huh? It's by Gamuda IBS. They just launched this VR initiative. I was very surprised they, they do this. Okay, um, Gamuda, they actually implemented a mobile VR. Okay, they said with the use of this VR technology, they're going to uh, affect the whole chain, the production chain, whereby anyone they want to build a building, huh? it's not to view the building interior, but to build the building and you want to know how the, the space looks like, you can go to the link by scanning on this barcode. Okay? No, sorry, this, this 
um, code and your phone you will have a VR app to view what you can, what, what is needed in that apartment space including the cables the piping and whatnot so if you are a developer or a subcon before you want to know how to actually put all that in right you can actually go to their website and you can view virtually all that thing is been done laid down as a visualization Gamuda started already okay i just took this out um uh, last month if i'm mistaken okay okay kudos to them kudos to them next okay this is really happening all these applications are really happening all around the world including malaysia okay um university of birmingham okay they know that all this railway heritage site has long gone due to what due to development okay so what they want the men the method they want to do is basically they want to preserve that heritage so one way to preserve the preserve the heritage is to digitize it so the old type of digitization uh, is just scan old photo turn it into 2d photo uh. but that, that 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 is very not that high fidelity type of digitization the next level is they turn the whole space into a vr including the actual you know design of the train you know um the train station the fields in 3d and you want, if you want to re-experience that whole area you can actually put on the vr hmd and you can actually re-see what is happening in the surrounding in malaysia can we do that i think we can Malacca? It's one of the historical sites. Okay, you can actually get in one of the historical places like Eiffel Mosa. You go up there, you have this VR terminal. Aircon, of course. Yeah. yeah. You oh, have that? Museum. Yes, maybe Museum. Museum. Museum have this? Um, no, not that I know of. Not that I know of. Okay? So, with this, you can have, you know, imagine Eiffel Mosa. I've been there. So, you go up to Eiffel Mosa, you can see all the huge space, right? So, you have a, you, that, that, VR terminal, you go in, pool, aircon, small space, you can see, oh, this is basically how it looks like during the 16th century, the 17th century. How nice is that? Okay, so this is one way to uh, preserve the heritage. Okay, Stanford Medicine using VR. Okay, this is the first version of Oculus Rift to teach medicine students. Okay, sorry, medical students to see you know to understand the flow of internal internal organ right so that they can they, they they are aware of okay this is how organ looks like you know how do you go inside you know to have to have a better visualization okay so these guys are doing that and all this data but please keep in mind this is this all this data are not those data that you hired any 3d developer just to model no this is from a real CT scan patient data so whatever the students are viewing that's the actual CT scan, CT scan of the 3d scanning of that data patient's data yeah okay this is interesting okay the company is called Bohemia interactive simulation this guy is not playing games uh, for your information this is actually a military simulation okay this company claims that they have mapped out the entire united states u.s uh, landscape so if you want to do any training simulation with the help of vr they can basically put you into that site and you can do any military simulation in this case he's actually showing his um the, the, the plane simulation where he flew over a particular u.s ground okay so and, and according to them they have few projects already in talks with the u.s government to do um, air force project on air force project okay aha this is not from u.s or not in uk but back in malaysia yeah i just came back <laughs> yeah it was a long weekend for me 
I told my wife, yeah, I got some few research to do before my presentation. Then my wife was like, seriously? Yeah, 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 true. I want to go there and try the VR coaster. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm here to share with you on my experience. Uh -huh. Okay, a according to Legoland, this is the first VR coaster in the world. Okay, so how this thing works uh, is in entertainment, uh, in theme parks and entertainment. It's like you, you have a normal conventional roller coaster ride, right? Yeah. So imagine uh, you put on a VR, it teleports you to a different environment, and yet you, you are feeling that, you know, the, the thrill of going down roller coaster in a different environment. How do you think? Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm here to share the It's really, really nice. As compared to a real roller coaster, this is less scary. Oh, okay. Ah, you know why? Because for a normal roller coaster, right, you get to see that slope before you go down. And I tell you, back in your mind, you'll be like, oh, freak out before the thing actually happened. That plus a 10% of tension. Okay? By doing this, it masks out what you are looking, what, what is going to happen. You will not know what is going to happen unless you take the ride for many, many times. You already predicted, ah, this is the, this is the place that you drop. If you are not, you'll be like enjoying, wow, you know, all the Lego minifigures is like, you know, running together, you know, trying to race until you, wah! <laughs> Okay, but when you do that, you don't see the depthness of the drop, you know. And be because it's VR, you can create a sharp drop in which you feel the sensation you're dropping, you're falling down. Okay, that reduces a lot of tension. Trust me. Yeah, but there's some uh, psychological tension. Uh. Okay, there's, I, I still remember there's one, there's one stop, one part, right? Visually and uh, 3D, uh, it's actually good going down. I'm like, oh, uh, but it actually, it doesn't. Uh. <laughs> Got tricked psychologically. Yeah, but that, that's why um, I encourage anyone that you know planning to go like that, you should try this out. Okay, for this, they are using some. They they, they are partnering with Samsung. Yeah, so they have the headset and whatnot. Okay, in entertainment. Aha. Uh -huh. So that is theme park. In entertainment, recently, uh, okay, my fellow friend, this guy from Square Enix, he um, completed his the extension of Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy uh, game called Monster of the Deep. It's actually a fishing game. So MTech invited PM to basically show him on what he did and his team did. So for your information, Sony is pushing a lot on the VR. So that's why this is one of the game by Square Enix, um, Final Fantasy, where you get to experience as the Final Fantasy character fishing, doing fishing. Okay? So that's on the entertainment part. Okay, virtual prototyping. Mm -hmm. Okay, for your information, BMW is using um, HTC Vive to help designer to understand, okay, how does the component of all this car that fits together, okay, and in return, they come up with component that, you know, fits nicely, assemble nicely, so that, you know, they can, they can cut the, the, the time to produce that component. So this is used in this industry. So I foresee that, yes, in the near future, Industry 4.0 cannot run away from it, from VR. Okay, so that is um, BMW. What about education? Of course, you know, those days, <coughs> how students study, teacher whiteboard, student textbook. Then, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, uh, flipping, flipping. Then teacher said, hey, Albert, just know what I, what I mentioned, please repeat again. Uh, Basically, my mind went somewhere. Lah. Okay? Imagine VR. If, if my history eh, was taught in VR, 
I will be a historian. <laughs> you can fight with Hantua. Yeah, I can fight with Hantua. I get to know who is Para Maswara. You know, that Para Maswara. I get to see the actual Malacca tree. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Rather than those days, you know, it's, it's like a very traditional, conventional way of teaching. You know, the uh, teacher will read and every student will sit, you know, reading the books. 1960, you know, sorry, 1963, what happened? Then fast forward to 1971, what happened? Imagine all these things can be compressed into a VR. So student, lecturer will say, okay, let's go for a slight marker history tour. Everybody put on your VR. Hui, sounds very high tech. <laughs> I tell you, come back, the, the, the student, you know, all this image that the student sees will glue into their mind. They will, they, will, they will want to share it again and again and again. So, because of this, right, we will not have any exam anymore. Yeah, because why? What want to test students? Students already know it. And it's all there. Why we have exam? Because to test people like me, lah. Because you know, teacher was talking, and I'm like dreaming somewhere else. <laughs> okay, so in um, Mendel Grammar School, Obata University Church Republic, they already try out this, and I did some research paper uh, reading, read, read, read up. I found that Taiwan is also applying VR in teaching. Taiwan, uh, one one spot in China also teaching people how to use language in VR. Okay, so I hope to see this in the near future that, you know, MOE is, yeah, MMU is doing this. Okay? Uh -huh. With all this education on the side, what about fitness? Uh, okay, the evolution of fitness. Uh, 1980s, everybody will go out to park. After that, after that, uh, then poor, uh, go for a very sumptuous lunch or dinner. <laughs> then why you go to the park? <laughs> okay, it's always like that. You know, my dad's are like that. Uh, we, we, I, he woke me up very early in the morning. Then we go for uh, exercise. Then after that, we go for heavy breakfast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Year two thousand. Wow, you got this very well paced gym, right? Then, oh, you know, you pay in order to reduce your weight and exercise. Then, the, the recent one, you have this instructor that, that looks very well. Then you have personal trainer to teach you how to do yoga, pilates, if I'm mistaken. Yeah, and then all this stuff on, you know, fitness. VR will change the industry. You know, you don't need all that. All you need is just a stepper, a bicycle, and a goggle. You can cycle anywhere you want. Okay, I choose, choose. Do it, do it, do it. I choose Germany. <laughs> yeah, see how far you can cycle, huh? <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that's VR. And you feel that, wow. No, I don't want to go to Germany. I want to try in Malaysia. I want to start cycling from my hometown, Batu Pahat. Kuala Lumpur. Do it. Okay. Wow, very hot. Uh. Turn on aircon. Wow. How nice if Malaysia's weather is like that, right? Yeah. This will change the way that people does fitness. Okay, and this company, this is actually a company called um, Holodia. Okay, they provide all this VR fitness solution. So, with all that application, this, this and, and many more, you know, this is all what, whatever I've seen. I've not talked about Alibaba invested a lot of billion in doing VR e-commerce yet. They have this fund, uh, I think few billion they were located. They wanted to see in the future how VR can help e-commerce. Because you know Alibaba e-commerce, right? So if the next platform is VR, are they ready? Yeah, so that might be the future if Alibaba is serious. Mark Zuckerberg bought over Oculus Rift. He, he says that, Facebook says that, you know, VR will be a platform. He sees that VR is coming, definitely will be a trend. Spent a few billion to bought over the company. Definitely, he has his own plan. And he didn't review out much, but he just wants to be ready when the time is there. Okay? So, 
The answer is not yet. Why? Because it's too expensive. Right? Seriously, compared to 1990s, uh, late 90s, 10,000 for one HMD, 599, 799 is considered a lot of you know, price cut, right? But it's still quite pricey. And apart from that, this is HTC buy. Looks like spaghetti, right? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, if you want to set up this type of you know the third type of machine, you need at least half an hour to do setup. If you want to dismantle it, another half an hour. So imagine, oh, after one long day of work, ah, finally I can enjoy my VR moment. Half an hour gone. So before 15 minutes, your son not in a room. Do 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 do. You want to sleep with it? Tell a story. Oh my gosh. Half an hour gone. Just to dismantle it. So it's not, unless it's for industry commercialized purpose, for common consumer, not yet because it's too bulky to set up. So what will be the solution? The solution may be a maybe a hybrid. Okay, so here I want to introduce you with our solution, we call it, I'm not here to sell a solution, just to share what we research and we, we basically come up with a minor solution. An innovation where we call it trilobite visual cast. Um, the idea itself is a hybrid. You know, the hybrid means we use client server technology. The problem with mobile technology is all the processes, the processing is done on your phone, right? So if imagine if all the processing is done on your phone, um, it, it consumes a lot of power, your phone gets heated very fast. Most important thing, how big is your storage for your phone? Yeah, one VR application is hits four, five gig one, you know. So meaning that those big industry type of VR application, few gigs. Imagine uh, right now your phone, you got only eight gig. Install one VR application, that's it. There goes your pictures, your MP3, and what and whatnot. So for the time being, phone to store content, no, not there yet. So the solution, all content processing. Client. If we have an app, a technology to connect to the client wirelessly using 5 gigahertz, image that's being processed can send over to the phone and you can enjoy VR on your phone and using a wireless connection. That would be great. And we have done that. So we are here to basically showcase this to you guys. At least you have, we don't, we didn't bring the mobile VR or the theater VR, but we brought our hybrid VR. Okay, so uh, later on, <laughs> later on you guys can have, have, have a look and test it. So basically, the cool thing, I think the uniqueness of it is, if you have any 3D programmer, you have any 3D program that runs on your PC, it must be first person. Using this technology, we can convert it to VR. No need any changes. Yeah, so we only managed to brought a uh, uh, game content called Left 4 Dead. Anyone heard of it? <laughs> Left 4 Dead. So Left 4 Dead, uh, it's a 3D game, right? There's no VR for it, right? But because of using this tech, you can have an instant VR, you can teleport yourself into the game itself, and you can shoot, shoot zombie. Yeah. Guys being guys, la, so sorry. Yeah, I was telling my, my, my guys, can we get any medical stuff? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so um, I'm gonna pass the floor to my, my guys um, and they will do a setup and later on you all can come and test it out. So I'll explain on the setup. Um, first of all Okay, first of all you need this one. 10 ringgit. If you buy in box, 7 ringgit. Again, I'm not selling this. Um, very cheap. It's just a casing. This is just a casing. So what this casing does is it has 90 degree of... So 70 degree of view of you. You basically use your mobile phone to put it inside here. Okay? So when you put it in, you slot it in... Any phone? Any phone. Any phone will do. 
So uh, the bigger the better lah, because you have a better view. Okay, uh, let me explain some this. Um, then you have lens here, so you look through this lens. And one unique thing about this chip casing uh, is you can basically do adjustment on your lens. You can adjust left, right, up, down. So if you if you are short sighted, you can adjust it anything so that you can see. Okay, it matches your, your view and the strap itself is quite comfortable. And you get this in having it. So cheap. Okay, Samsung Galaxy, the Samsung Gear is almost similar, but of course with some you know controller. It is 129 USD. Okay, so um, what we are gonna do right now is um, this phone, latest phone, huh? Mi A1. Mi A1. Okay. Tell me A1. Okay. Um, it's installed with it's installed an app called Trilobite. So this app is connected to our server app in this workstation laptop gaming machine. So so once connected, you can choose the type of um, feature that you want. We want to go for VR game. So you will press the VR game. So right now you will have a stereoscopic view. The movement, it basically uses the gyro on the device itself. As you move, the game moves. Yeah, okay, so after that, so you just slot it inside here. You have your HMD ready. So you put it and you can adjust on the lens so that you look, it, it, it's, you have that focus. You put it on the head, you can move around. To have that added experience, huh? Okay, two hundred forty nine ringgit. Okay, um, if you are a gamer, uh, if you are a gamer, again, I'm not promoting this. Um, yeah, you, we we can easily brought a controller, but controller is not nice, lah. You want you want to have nice experience if I can. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is a VT, a Bluetooth gun, which is connected to the, the uh, workstation. Basically, you can... Okay, basically, basically you, what, what you can do is you drag here to do reloading. Reload. Okay, um, pull the trigger here to shoot. Okay, and also this button over here to for you to move front back to turn to turn around you use a head because it's already gyro in order to play this in order to play this right make sure the gun the bd gun is together with you so as you turn you turn this way it's more natural i've seen players huh? they're so lazy huh? they're like that <laughs> yeah. Be careful, be careful. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, you move according to this way, then you get to enjoy the game. To, to view, it's all on the HMD to actually track your movement. So, any volunteer? Mr. Toh, Mr. Toh. Mr. Toh, Mr. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I think just now you mentioned that you have you have played. Demo, demo, demo. You know how you know how to play, right? So yeah, this is just for you to move. <laughs> <laughs> you move. <laughs> 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 okay, we have sound. Wow, it's the raw sound. Can you see the image clearly? Alright, thank you. And then we must have. Okay, so. 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 Ok